chimps are kind of like a two-way mirror. You know, when you look at a two-way mirror, you can kind of see your reflection, but you can also see through. Indigenous to Africa, these extraordinary animals are at risk. And in West Africa, the future of one subspecies hangs in the balance. Liberia is one of the last strongholds for the Western chimpanzees. Um, it's actually one of the last strongholds for chimpanzees in general. So Liberia is really critical in um, saving this species. What began as a love story became one couple's life mission to protect these critically endangered animals. At the heart of what we do is, you know, we're providing a home for these chimps that otherwise would be alone, neglected. But almost equal to that is that we're a conservation organization. This is Liberia's first chimpanzee sanctuary. This is Inside Africa. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit how, you know, chimps communicate. So one of the, the main way that chimps greet each other, they do it in a couple different ways. They, um, they'll hold out a hand like this and not you, AC, and they'll go, so that was a proper greeting. So this is Mara. And so what Mara did was she took my hand and she put her light, her teeth lightly and lightly bit me. And a lot, sometimes, a lot of times, they'll, they'll also vocalize where they'll go, oh, 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 oh. and it can be a, like a pant where they'll, um, where you'll, sometimes it'll be like this with the hand, but then also, sometimes it turns into a hug. Meet Jim and Jenny Desmond, the co-founders of Liberia's first sanctuary for orphaned chimpanzees. Being the founder of Liberia Chimpanzee Rescue and Protection, better known as LCRP, is, a very all-encompassing role. It's, I mean, it's our lives, really. You know, we founded this organization, but we are a team of many, many people, um, humans and other people like chimps and other creatures. So it's a um, 24-7 round the clock job. In a matter of two to three years, we've received 40 chimpanzees, which is astronomically high. LCRP was officially founded in 2016. But Jenny and Jim's story goes way back to 1995, when she was a young sales and marketing consultant, and he was working as an analytical chemist in the USA. Jenny and I met at a brewery called um, Harpoon. <clears throat> it's a small brewery in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. I mean, it was, you know, pretty much love at first sight. We immediately, it was just clear that something, you know, cosmic had happened, you know. We decided to get married and go on a round the world trip, backpacking, and um, one of the things I really wanted to do was go see um, great apes in the wild. And so we went and saw some orangutans and we went and to a rescue center. And I think it just was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is where I can work. This is where I can feel comfortable working with animals, but feel like I'm doing something right and something that makes a difference and, and can help them. That experience sort of changed the course of our lives. The experience inspired Jim to attend veterinary school. After he graduated, the young couple, together with their beloved dog, Princess, set off on the adventure of a lifetime to work with chimpanzees in sanctuaries across Africa. So far, their journey has taken them from Kenya to Uganda, the DRC, and in 2015, Liberia. So we came here for another purpose, um, to help some other chimpanzees who had been abandoned for, um, after being used for research. And after arriving here, we were brought orphan chimpanzees who were victims of the bushmeat and the pet, live pet trades. And we realized there was a much bigger problem at hand in Liberia. They were only supposed to be in Liberia temporarily to support and stabilize the former research chimps which they did and who are now thriving. But they soon realized there were other chimps in need of care. I think once people heard that, 
um, and knew there were chimps out and about who needed rescuing. Um, they realized there were people here who might help and brought us the first couple chimps. Um, not necessarily knowing we'd start a sanctuary, we didn't know we'd start a sanctuary, um, or any kind of the conservation programs we're doing today. But just knowing that we maybe could figure out some way to help these chimps. With Princess in tow, and together with a local team of caretakers and support staff, LCRP was founded, a first for the country their presence meant that orphaned Western chimps had a safe place to go. Before we came, no chimps were confiscated. There was a law, and, uh, but the law was not able to be enforced because if you get a report for a chimp, the, the, the authorities told us they turned a blind eye because they literally did not know what to do with these chimps. So the existence and presence of somebody who was willing to take the chimps did change everything dramatically. These guys behind me are some of the chimps we've rescued. There's about 24 chimpanzees that live in this enclosure. They're all orphans. They're all orphaned from the bushmeat and uh, international live trade in great apes. Um, and uh, so the fact that they're here is a real tragedy. Really where they should be is in the forest with their, with their families. And it's unfortunate that they're here, but we're happy that um, we're able to provide them you know, at least a, as a home as, as best we can to let them sort of live out their life in, uh, in safety and security. There are four different subspecies of the common chimpanzees, and the chimps in Liberia belong to the Western or West African group. In 2016, they were categorized as critically endangered by the IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature. They've lost about 80% of the population in the past 30 to 40 years. Um, and so it's really, um, yeah, they're seri under serious, serious threat. The risks these chimps face include habitat destruction, poaching for bushmeat, and being sold into the national and international pet trade. While the chimps in here are safe, Outside of the sanctuary's walls, the ones in the wild remain at great risk. What is it going to take to protect them from extinction? Next. It's an average weekday morning at Liberia Chimp Rescue and Protection, just outside of Monrovia. And despite the early hour, things are already in full swing. So it's 8 a.m., but we've already had a full day, and we have a full day ahead of us. Um, so these guys all, most of these guys sleep with us at night um, in our bed, and so they wake up at about 5 o'clock. We get up, and we play around inside for a while, and we eat, have our bottles and breakfast, and just goof off and play in the inside of the house. And then um, the bigger guys, the middle group, um, plays down here, and when they leave to go over to the pavilion area, then we bring these guys down um, and they play down here. They spend the, their day here, down here. Chimpanzees used to be found throughout the tropical forests of West and Central Africa. But today, only an estimated 150 to 200,000 remain in the wild. In 2010, a nationwide survey in Liberia estimated that only 7,000 of the Western chimpanzee were left in the country. Founder Jenny Desmond says conserving the species has never been important. The role I hope we play is I hope we, we are able to um, take care of these little guys and secure a future for them for their lifetimes. Um, in the bigger picture, I hope we stop getting these little guys and chimpanzees stay in the wild and that Liberia becomes a really great model for conservation efforts and initiatives and we see a lot of success here. The Desmond's commitment to the well-being of animals began with Princess, a rescue dog they adopted back in the States who has been with them every step of their journey. She's lived in like nine different countries now. She's a real comfort to the chimps, especially when they first come in. A lot of times, even before they trust us, they trust Princess. She's amazing. She's an amazing soul. We're so, I don't know, I get, I get, 
emotional thinking about her because she's getting older. So I always worry like, you know, what's gonna happen when we don't have Princess anymore? Jenny and her husband opened the sanctuary themselves three years ago, but they say that they couldn't keep the operation running without the caregivers who provide the chimps with around the clock support. I can't think of a more important role um, than a caregiver here. The caregivers, uh, they're so dedicated. I mean, they know every single chimp, they know every single personality, they know every single quirk, and their role is, what I always tell them is, your job is to just give them love, 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 and more love, and that's what they do. And, um, and these guys flourish, and they thrive with that love. Most of the caregivers, like Annie Garpu, are from the local community and live just beyond the sanctuary's perimeter. They take care of them because they don't have no mom. We ask the mom for them. While she has three of her own children at home, Annie will spend several nights a week sleeping at the sanctuary with the baby chimps. <laughs> so in the wild, a young chimpanzee would stay with the mother up until about age five. Um, and they, the first two to three years of their life, they're almost 24 seven, never venturing that far away from the mom. And so we try and have them feel safe and secure and have that comfort that they would have with their mom. So we act as surrogate moms. Annie had never worked with chimps before joining LCRP two years ago. First time I came, all of them, they loved me, they started jumping on me, playing, laughing. So I'm myself happy. Science has been able to establish that chimps and humans share nearly the same DNA. And just like people, each chimp has their own unique personality. They're so similar to us. And when you interact with them, even when you're watching them in the wild, but especially when you're interacting with them like the way we do when we're acting as surrogate parents, you see how similar they are to people. Because they're so intelligent, because they're so similar to us, you can see all these things that are similar to humans, but it also makes other animals, I think, relatable in a way that you can't necessarily with other species. They're just so cool, and they're all individuals, and they're so smart, and they're funny, and um, they're just really amazing. On an almost weekly basis, the sanctuary receives new arrivals, many of whom are incredibly vulnerable and need constant care and reassurance. They've been traumatized, they've been, their mother's been killed, they've been sort of ripped from their life in the forest. We don't even know how long they've spent in some other form of captivity, not being treated well, having a pretty scary, not very good life. And so when they reach us, our job is to not only get them healthy physically, but really uh, most of it's about psychological well-being. So this is Pajo. Pajo came in uh, a couple months ago and he was being sold as a pet. He had a dislocated shoulder and a very badly broken arm. He was very severely depressed, um, wouldn't eat, wouldn't drink anything, really didn't want to hang out with us at all. But as you can see a couple months later, I mean, the, the reward really is, is seeing him being this comfortable and trusting. And he's able to use his arm. His arm has healed very well. He's able to climb and play with the other chimps. The younger and more vulnerable arrivals, like Pajo, arrive at Jenny and Jim's house, where they receive 24-7 care from Annie and other caregivers. Right now, with the number of chimps we have, it's just exponentially more chaotic. Um, having them in the house means you're just, you're never off. The nights are long, they wake up a lot. Um, all the chimps are at different levels of, of progress. So some of them might wake up multiple times a night and, and need something to, to drink, like a bottle. And some of them might just wake up and, and be anxious. Um, some of them might sleep through the night. <laughs> When they are a bit bigger and more confident, they are moved to an enclosure with other chimps just down the road. And as they get older and they get more confident and they start acting like, you know, rambunctious um, toddlers, more than toddlers, like when they're, you know, getting really uh, feeling like they can adventure, go out and adventure around, um, then we integrate them in with this larger group 
of chimps who are a little bit older and then they start living with chimps 24 hours a day. But some of the group are in an in-between phase, confident enough to hang out here during the day, but still want to go home to Jenny at night. So every evening at 6 p.m., Jim rounds them up, puts them in his car, and drives them home for bedtime. The day-to-day -day rewards are just seeing these guys make progress and become happy. I mean, turn from traumatized babies with broken arms who lost their moms and are, are orphaned and won't eat and won't, won't even look at you or let you touch them, to happy, thriving, excited, social babies playing with other chimps. I mean, that's the reward. This work has become a family affair, but conserving the future of these animals takes a full-time commitment. Ahead, expanding the family circle in the fight to save the Western chimpanzee. Here on the lush, protected grounds of the Liberia Chimp Rescue and Protection Shelter, over 40 orphaned West African chimpanzees have found a home and a family. Ranging in age from just babies who are still only a few weeks old, to Johnny, who is 13 years old, one of only two adult chimps who lives at the sanctuary. So let's go over and see Johnny, because I haven't said hi to him this morning, so. <laughs> Johnny has come a long way since arriving at LCRP. His mother was killed, of course, and his family for bushmeat, but he was taken as an infant to be a pet, um, was part of the family for the first year or so until he got to be too rambunctious. When we came upon Johnny, he was about 13, and he had been chained to a tree for 10 years. and. Um, it was devastating. Um, I, had, I have never experienced anything like what I experienced when I came around the corner and saw him. Um, he was screaming bloody murder. I mean, he was terrified. And it wasn't an easy task because he's, he's big and he was strong and he was very scared. And um, got him back here. And when I compare him to the person I met that day, I just, I can't believe it that that's him. <laughs> ow, ow. Oh, he loved play. He loved exercise because he's too healthy. Running in the morning, clapping your hair, calling somebody, greeting people, and so on. <laughs> For the time being, Johnny is kept in his own enclosure. While founders Jenny and Jim are in the process of building new facilities where he can safely play with the other chimps. In his current space, caregivers ensure he gets tons of stimulation and interaction. Sometimes we teach him to clap, we teach him to run around, for him to feel happy, to feel comforted. Key to his personal development has been his relationship with senior caregiver Eddie Freeman, who calls Johnny his son. Feel my hair. Feel my hair. Feel my hair. Feel the hair. Oh, wow. Eddie first encountered these animals in 1977 when he worked for a U.S.-based research lab in Liberia doing the laundry. Yes, I love laundry because cleanliness is next to garden. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> After that lab closed, he joined LCRP and was recently promoted to facilities coordinator. He does everything from enrichment exercises with Johnny to manage all the chimps' food and still insists on doing the laundry. Feed them four times a day. You eat six in the morning, take several hours, and then by 10, they eat fruits and vegetables. Feed them with papaya, pineapples, and so on. As for Johnny's favorite food. He loves cucumber. Cucumber, he doesn't, doesn't eat more banana, but cucumber. This home for rescues is constantly welcoming new chimps, and the latest addition to the family is doing very well. So this is Citizen. He's um, our newest arrival. He just came a few days ago. He is missing this finger. It could have been when he was 
taken off of his mom. A lot of times there's injuries. It could have been from a snare. And, uh, but generally he looks really healthy. Citizen was rescued by Liberia's first wildlife confiscation unit, a vital element in securing the future of this subspecies. So the job of the wildlife confiscation unit will be multifaceted, but um, they'll be basically enforcing the law. There's a wildlife law in Liberia that makes it illegal for um, protected animals and chimpanzees specifically to be hunted, killed, kept, sold, eaten, anything um, that's dangerous to their well-being. It's a huge step in the right direction. Having been only recently established, this is their first visit to the sanctuary where they were also able to see how Citizen is getting on since they rescued him from a woman who was trying to sell him as a pet on the streets of Monrovia. He was a kind of sad, especially, probably. He, I mean, he, never, I mean, he didn't have a playmate. He was not alone with his mother. I mean, they had a chain around his neck. When I saw him, I felt so sad. Citizen so looked very much happy today. So I myself, I'm feeling very happy. I'm feeling proud that the work I did, I have seen the outcome of the work. Like Johnny, Citizen has made visible progress since arriving at LCRP. But the future of chimpanzees like them is not guaranteed. It is going to depend on a collective commitment from government, local and regional law enforcement, LCRP, conservation bodies, and donors. People are always amazed at the chimps, right? Because especially these young chimps, they're, they're so cute and they're funny and they do these amazing things. But the truth is, these guys, every single one of these guys is a, is a tragedy. It's a tragedy that they're here. And as much as I love them and care about them, um, you know, I wish I had never met any of them because really where they should be is in the forest with their family. This couple that opened their doors and their hearts to saving a species hope that their labor of love will be continued across the continent by other compassionate conservations, ensuring chimps don't ever disappear from our planet.